Oh, hi. Welcome to Tea with Fran. This is where I get to have tea with a variety of interesting people from the area. I wonder who's coming in for tea today. Perhaps the best known couple in Anaganish, whether they're collecting bottles for money or doing odd yard jobs or more fun, dancing at the Legion, they're always together. So when people in town found out the couple wanted to marry but didn't have any money for a wedding, they started planning. And the project grew and grew and grew. Now it seems there's hardly a soul who's not involved in some way in planning Marilyn and Austin's wedding. And I was driving downtown, I'd been covering Forks in the morning, and my mind wasn't in the happy places, and I saw them walking downtown. She was carrying a rake, and he was pushing the lawnmower. And I was like, I, that's how I gotta, run, I gotta go talk to them. And so I pulled over, and they were a ways up the street. And so it was funny, because I had my little camera and my little notebook that I go running around with. So I stopped them, and just talked to them for about probably all 15 minutes. And, uh, and their story was more interesting than I thought. Today we have Austin Carter and Marilyn Minty who are going to tell us about their love story. Now, not all love stories begin this way. Yours began in a special way. Can you tell us a bit about it? Austin had half the garden and I had the other half and that's how we met. I see, tending the garden. Yeah. A little bit like Adam and Eve, eh? That's right. I <laughs> planted us in. <laughs> you two uh, uh, have uh, a special story to tell, and it's a story that involves a lot of hardships. Austin, can you tell us a bit about your story? Well, I did home care for my parents about uh, 10 years. My mom had Alzheimer's, and and my father was a, a congestive heart failure and then was a diabetic and I did home care and then I, I was more used to mom, you know, like uh, her disease was advancing but I was, you know, more used to that, I could see that was happening and then with my father, when he died, he just about a month and he went to the nursing home and then it kind of, my nerves kind of crashed and went downhill and then I ended up in St. Martha's and I stayed there for two months and that was um, I ended up in there 2004 Christmas Eve and I was there to about the end of February and then I joined Southern Community Home. I gradually put my life back together a little piece at a time. Something like Johnny Cash with an old car. You remember that story? <laughs> <laughs> now tell me Austin, what was the diagnosis at that time? Well it was a compulsive behavior like you know you didn't want to gather things and you didn't want to get rid of them and more or less just anxiety and depression. So, anxiety and so, depression. So I took pills for that and it worked still on them because uh, I don't want to go off because I might go back to the way that it was, you know. Right. So the pills are working and I'm doing fine now. Marilyn, you've had an interesting life. Tell us a bit about your struggle with depression and uh, feelings of anxiety and how you coped with that. Well, I, I lived out in Black Avenue for a long time, and, and uh, I was married before, and, and you know, but it didn't work out. So I, I was like living in secluded, you know. I couldn't drive and different things like that, you know, to right. get out and stuff. And you were living in isolation. Isolation, yeah, and and um, well. I, I had kind of had a hard life, a harder life, eh? Hard life. I see. But since, you know, I asked, prayed to God to send me somebody nice, and they sent me Austin. So ah. that's, you know. Wonderful. And, um. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, I asked God to, uh, my marriage was not good, eh? It was, I didn't have a nice person to right. live with then. But then, when I got a divorce, I met Austin after a while. And, you know, things. Sometimes you have hard times in life, but then it turns out to be, you know, life gets better for you, right? And you two work together at certain jobs, don't you? We do, yeah. Yeah, I usually carry the rake and uh, has the lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> and you do gardening in the winter time? Uh, not so much shoot. gardening, it's just mostly uh, maintaining lawns. Like maintaining the lawn. Push the lawn more for me, I take care of my gas and oil. And the gas and supplies like that, you know. 
that are on foot most children. of the time, yeah. And in the winter time, do you do shoveling? I do most of that on my own because it's cold for Maryland to be out in the, in the cold. You have a job where you meet the public, too. Yeah, I'm a greeter at Walmart part-time, yeah. How do you find that? Well, it's nice you meet a lot of people, and people are very nice. And made a lot of friends there, and do, doing well. Austin, you and Ireland have had kind of a fairy tale romance. Haven't you been a park bench sweethearts, like sort of sitting on the park bench around we, town? We do that too, yeah, on our breaks, you know, if we're between jobs or something. Right. Sometimes we'll take a break and we sit there and hold hands and talk to each other and talk to people that come along the street or whatever, you know. They always right. stop, everybody knows us. You say you hold hands, why do you hold hands? Well, it's just something that's it's natural. We feel comfortable thing. doing that, you know? Isn't that wonderful? wonderful. Yeah. And I hear that the town of Anakin Ish is planning a wedding for you. They are. Well, tell us about that. How did that get started? We were coming through town on, actually it was Halloween afternoon, about uh, 2.30 or so. Yeah. We were going to do a lawn, you know, just raking the leaves and the final cut for the lawn, and he started interviewing us. I think I, it was a couple days later, I think I ran into Maryland and Austin downtown, and they were they were right sweet, and they thanked me for, for doing the story or whatever, and so, and that's it. So now I'm actually going to be the MC at their wedding, which the town is planning. They've honored me by asking me to do that, so I've course I've got it in my scheduler and I'm very excited to be involved in it so so that's that that's right nice too they're, they're lovely people and then it did, we thought you know just be in the in the paper and nothing else would be coming of it and then the next day my sister and my uh, my niece by marriage came in and uh, they said it was on Facebook and this is how it all came together well I just go back uh, after I read Aaron's article um, on November the 1st in the Chronicle and uh, I just thought that as a community we should be able to um, do something to help them so I, I uh, posted something on Facebook everybody just seemed to think it was a wonderful idea so then I created their own Facebook page okay. dedicated to, to two of them and that's what uh, we're going to have a look at here now I'm going to show them the page and show them all the outpouring of support they've been getting she did a beautiful job. Yeah, right? she did. It's really yeah. nuts. Not only were you blessed with a dress, but you have those who do the reception, the music at the reception, uh -huh. the video of the wedding. Could you tell us a bit about the businesses or the people that have volunteered to help and in which way they volunteered to help? Well, the beautiful store, they donated the gown and to uh, me and uh, old men, yeah. menswear. They um, donated the soup to Austin for his wedding. And um, Tall and Small, I think that's the name. And uh, they donated the sweets and, and the Legion donated the hall to us and the catering. I Some see. people donated I the catering. See. What about the music? And I think the JFX, I think, is, is, yeah. is going to be the DJ, yeah. Mm. So Peggy Thompson was your guardian angel, so to speak. That's right. Yeah, well, she helped us. She helped us a lot. So you become sort of minor celebrities. Well, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we have. <laughs> we have. Austin and Maryland, as I said, this has been kind of a fairy tale romance. Why would you say this sequence of events took place? Aaron Beswick taking your picture, getting in the paper, people responding to, to the newspaper article with offers of things for you. We all have guardian angels. And I, I always believe in angels. And my mom believed in angels. And I think there was some kind of power there, you know, bringing this on. And then my mom and my, my mom and Austin's mom watching down over us. Mostly God played the part. Mostly God played the That's part. Right. I think that most people, when they hear a, a story that's so good, they want to be a part of it and have some of that good for themselves. There was so much badness, things going on in the world, and it was nice to 
hear some good thing, you know? Yeah. Happy, that made them happy, you know? That made them feel good. We have a lot of support from the people, like uh, the credit union and uh, oh, in yeah. the tea room are, are yeah. all contributing and, you know, setting up funds to help us, you know, to, to cover the reception and, and the supper and... Oh, excellent. And, and, yeah. I didn't know that. Like, yeah, you know, we have... This part-time work, we could never afford to do it on our own, so... No, so of course This not. is a big, big step and, and all the support that we we'll get will yeah. be a big, a big uh, help to us. Now, uh, your wedding is forthcoming. What's, what is the big date? Um, June the 13th. June the 13th. Yeah. As I said, it's kind of like a fairy tale story. It is. Well, I would tell them to kind of work on her every day. And, you know, just because you're married or, you know, you still have to have that effect, uh, effects in your life. And, you know, even have a date once a month. 